The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Friday, the 11th day of June. Welcome to The Daily Hour, brought to you by Medical House, One Communications, and Lindos. I'm Jamal Hartman, along with Michaela and Sherry. Hey, can, can you hear us, Sherry? I can, I can, I can. Good morning. Good morning. How's Good everybody? morning. Good. I am loving Michaela's colors today. You like my pink for Rosé Day tomorrow? My pink. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I pink. know where she was going with this, Kayla. My, my very pale pink. I don't think it's pale pink. Rose day and my pink lipstick. You you like those, right? Pink. Yeah. I don't. It's a variation of red. So, <laughs> probably like my rose is pink. See, I was, rocking, I, I was rocking. I was rocking. I was rocking with you with the pink shirt nails, but then when you went to the lips, I'm like, no, that's red. That that that's, no, that's no, 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 red. No, no, no. I will get the lipstick and I will show you. It is pink. See, pink. pink. <laughs> Yesterday it was red. Well, I mean, look, Kills, let, let them have that because <laughs> once we have our cup back, they're going to need all the red things that they want. To, Hello. Yeah. We'll right. see how that goes. Well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> thank you all so much for making us part of your daily routine. A good one to end the week as we welcome uh, author Joan Aspinall to the show today. The Daily Play is we're having a feud. So number one answers only. And it's Friday. So we'll you know definitely give you a gift. Or we'll Be put give you a chance to win a gift. How's that? Listen, me and Sherry are ready. Okay. Yes. You are not stumping us. We're ready. I've got my hand on the buzzer. I've got my hand on the buzzer. <laughs> you, you heard you heard Michaela say you're not stumping us. It sounds like she she just seems like she may have got stumped recently about a question. I, I don't know. Just... Yesterday was rough. Okay. Yesterday was rough. I could not believe that I did not guess Ethiopia, even though I knew that because I'm a coffee person. Like, yeah, I was shocked, Michaela. I was like, Michaela's gonna know this. Not that I do. You know, I'm not a co coffee connoisseur like yourself. Please. I don't go to Starbucks and do half this and this and all of that. I just, <laughs> what comes in a mocha? What comes in a cappuccino? What comes in a, okay, give me one of those. You know, oh. so. Next time what? it needs to be like a wine question or something like that. And then, well, I, mean, yeah. I think she'd have got it if it was rose. I think she'd have got it. If it oh, was. of course. Yeah. Of course. Well, well Michaela, Michaela, easy now. <laughs> I, I see a question coming up next week and him replaying this. Of course, of course. Uh, you, 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 you got me down. You got me down. Um, yeah. You, you know, the hints are there. So it may not be next week. It may not be next month, but it's coming. So be prepared. Um, we'll, we'll trip up. But look, folks, we have a lot to discuss today. Um yes. Here's the thing. We've spoken about it on this show before, and I think the audience plays a huge role in the question of the day. And the question's very simple. How do you all feel? Most, some, A lot of people, I'm going to say a large majority of people have been working from home over the last year or so, right? And now it looks like a lot of companies are asking people to come back to work, either full-time or in a hybrid. Um, form some some matter and believe it or not there are people who are leaving companies rather than going back to work and um you know i usually ask you all your opinions first but i'm going to share mine so you can realize i'm not stealing my opinion from you you see his hijacking right his like right. taking over the show okay i, I don't no 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 because i'm like nah they ain't gonna say i'm copying off kales today no no i, I usually <laughs> give it to you. but no my, my opinion is very simple honestly if you 
have been doing your job from home over the last year or so during the pandemic, and you're asked to come back into an office, something about trust comes to mind. Mm. Um, something about control comes to mind. Because if you've tr- if a person has been working from home during this pandemic and you're asking them to come back in the office, I, I want to know why. So maybe there's some entrepreneurs or business owners out there that can give us some insight. Has the production level dropped? Like, give us some ideas. I, I know Kills and Sherry already. <laughs> oh, look, look at Kills. Like, Kills is like. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Kills. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mikhail. Go ahead. Oh, my gosh. So <laughs> my thoughts are, if the job is getting done, what is the issue? Mm-hmm. What is the issue? So for me, it's like, I'm very efficient in the morning, regardless of if I'm in an office or if I'm home. I'm very efficient in the morning. So from eight-ish until like one-ish, I'm banging out all my work, regardless whether I'm home or if I'm in an office. Um, And so for me, it's like I've set up my career Mm -hmm. to be able to literally work anywhere. As long as I have a laptop and Mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, I can do my job. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's kind of like, okay, you want people to come back into the office because you want people to start being around each other again. I don't want to be around you people. <laughs> I don't. I don't. We appreciate the honesty. <laughs> I don't. And so it's just like, for me, I like that you brought up control because that seemingly is part of the conversation. It's, you know, like I read this thing um, last week, I want to say, um, and there was this job, I can't remember what the company was. And the HR person was like, well, if we work from home, then I can't monitor what the receptionist does. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. You can't monitor what the receptionist does. So that's why you're not in favor of work from home. Okay, that doesn't make sense. And then like you said, there are a lot of people leaving their jobs yep. and working for either working for remote companies mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. allow them to work from home or starting their own business because they're like, I'm not dealing with this nine to five crap yep. anymore. This is not stable. They're mm-hmm. not valuing my mental health. I don't want to work. I don't want to go in the office. You can go right there. <laughs> Well, I mean, and I agree with everyone, you know, I think working from home is productive. When you talk about job retention, you talk about lack, you don't have to drive in rush hour traffic. Mm -hmm. You don't have to deal with, at least in Bermuda, looking for a parking space. We know about that. Mm -hmm. And then let's not talk about the kids and the value that you bring to your children and your family, Mm -hmm. staying at home and being, being able to multitask all of those things. If you are productive, if you are able to do what you need to do at home and the work is getting done, Mm -hmm. what is the problem? Well, let's go to, um, uh, it was Apple. I think, yes. Um, 100% remote work ends for Apple employees return to office already forced some of our colleagues to quit. So uh, Mm. Apple CEO uh, team, Tim Mm. Cook announced that employees would have to return to the office three days a week. Some of them are pushing back saying the decision has already forced others to quit. So now um, that's Apple right now. Facebook um, extended its work at home policy to most employees. Right. So Mm -hmm. you see some, you know, companies uh, are, you know, Amazon's relaxing its two, um, Return to work plans will let employees re- uh, work remotely two days a week. Now, here's here's the challenge because I did mention you know hybrid systems where people may go into the office two or three days a week. Um, here, here's it. I just like to know, right? So if I'm asking you, Sherry and Michaela, all I'm asking is just to explain why. Like, you know, why is it necessary? Because right. Sherry just touched on two big things, right? Two mm-hmm. key things. One. Think of the parents that can now, you know, do the job more efficiently because they don't have to rush out to maybe take the children to school. They're exactly. present. You know, it's not if it's not impacting the company, I'm not understanding why someone needs to even be in there three or two times a week. I think I like Nicole Walker's comment, Kills. Sure. I'm happy to continue working from and go into office as I need to. Less interruptions at home, more likely to work a little later at home, and definitely saving money on gas and parking. Exactly. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. Elizabeth Sherry. 
I am so much more efficient at home having the option to log on earlier at work later is a win for me. Yeah, the thing is, is that you have the options to log on a little bit later, stay a little bit later. You have a lot more flexibility that than you would if you do at home. Mm -hmm. If you were in an office space that I've been in, we, we tend to chat, we tend mm -hmm. to, you know, do those kind of things, which is great for a good debriefing and, and all of that. Right. But at the same token, I found it better than coming in uh, at least an hour or two early to to be able to knock some things out and if, right. but if i'm at home and everybody's gone mm -hmm. it what's the difference yeah no i totally get that and like we have to remember because there's this whole argument about companies who have people who can't work from home and then those who can and people who can't work from home feeling away and i'm just like i've literally created my life and my career <laughs> to be able to work from yeah. anywhere as long as I have a laptop and Wi-Fi. Like, I don't feel like I should be penalized for being innovative. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It's a new space. It's, it's a new yeah. space. It's time to evolve. Tamara Richardson, Kales. Sure. I'm in the Michaela camp. However, as a leader, I can't, dismiss, I can't diminish the relevance of modeling good behavior, motivating others, and the fact that teams lose a degree of brainstorming when they are all in separate spaces. Fair mm. point. Um, Elizabeth says, would be interested to know if any local companies in Bermuda have made work from home permanent. And here's an interesting question from Vivian Craig. What happens to the office spaces if no one works in them? That was yeah. going to be my next thing. I was going to say, is everybody, you know, concerned about the leases and everything that they've been locked in for three or four years and they can't get out of them. So you have to, you're making everyone go back to work to make it make sense. You know what I mean? But the thing is, Sherry, um, I like that you bring that point up, but there are a lot of companies, especially reinsurance companies yes. who provide lunch for their staff every day. Um, there's a lot of companies who provide not just curated coffee, but like nice coffee. I know there are some insurance companies who have smoothie bars, et cetera. So if you haven't been paying for that, that's a massive savings, right? Yes. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, at the same token, like I said, the the office spaces are there. So what are what about these leases? What about these these contracts that people so are they getting pushback from the landlords and you no know, money to put in to pay for it? It it's I'm sure for on their end they they have a a, a different thought process. But when you talk about being able to put out the work, work from home is is where it should be. Yeah. yeah. And then we think about like the safety aspect of it as well. And we have to be real. There are a lot of people who don't like to wear masks. There are a lot of people who also aren't vaccinated. So when you are opening up space, especially if it's, you know, an open plan space where everyone sits in rows and things like that, you have to think of the safety things as well, because like, I don't want to find myself in a situation where a colleague's like, yeah, I'm not going to pull my mask up because I don't feel like it. Well, I want to take yeah. it from a different angle um, and to her question, what happens to office spaces if no one works in them? Um, I'm, I'm, I really don't care. Um, I'm more about the human, <laughs> human element. I mean, I don't care about some rich person who owns a building and can't rent it when it comes to the human element. So I can't you know, Jamal on a Friday. I can't. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, like, you know, some, some, look, most office buildings are owned by people with money. I yeah. cannot choose them over the mental state and space of people. Yeah. You're asking to go into work just because you're paying for something. Right. So at, at the end of the day, for me, I, I don't care, <laughs> you know, and, and, and this yeah. is another reason I don't care because if these are business people that own this office space, then they should be creative enough to find a new way. There are yeah. art, art people looking for space to do art. So it's up to them to be creative, to find a way to utilize that space that makes sense for them. But don't make the, the, the uh, vulnerable feel guilty for um, them not being smart enough to find something to do with office space that they have. I'm sorry for my rant, but that's just, I'm like, no, the human element first and always, you know? Um, Teresa Brantano, uh, Sherry. Unless there are clear advantages in face-to-face -face interaction and centralization, such as benefits to clients or efficiency in general, there is no reason to continue to work in from home. Agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't think I can disagree with anything she stated. Yeah. I'm Jody Virgil Kales. Sure. I've been working from home even before pandemic. My previous job in corporate encouraged it. 
And as the team was spread around the Caribbean, we remained present and productive. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Tanika Eve says, if you're proficient from home, why not continue to do so? It can be more holistic for companies and employees. It should be a choice. If employee reviews show that the employees have excelled while working from home, make it optional. I, I, I yeah. think it all makes sense, but you got to remember, like, with certain companies or managers or leaders, I mean, it's not about making sense, folks. I mean, as we stated, is it about control? Is it about lack of trust? Like, is there something that built that? No, I want to go back to what Tamara said, because definitely you want to maintain a company culture. You want to maintain, like, you know, let's say everyone is working from home. Maybe you get together once a month or bi-weekly to go for lunch with, you know, the office colleagues and stuff like that. There are ways to make this work. We have to- Yeah way beyond where we've been living all this time. Monica Dunstan, Sherry. Some companies have done, have been doing row results only work environment for years and employees report more satisfaction with their jobs in general. Definitely. Bobby seems to like people. She says, I like the option. However, I'm a huge proponent of face-to-face collaboration when possible. Well, Bobby, you're an entertaining <laughs> personality. So we wouldn't mind being face-to-face working with I'll you. Know. Um, not everyone has colleagues like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. No. And that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of this, and I'm not I'm obviously not saying this for all managers, CEOs, et cetera, but we have to be real. A lot of the times the managers are the ones who are just micromanaging. They're the ones who are just, you know, oh, let's have meetings, let's do this, let's do that. So if they're working from home and they're not, you know checking in on you, checking in on you, micromanaging you, calling meetings, right. what are they doing? Mm. <laughs> what are they doing? And let's be honest, it's been done for a year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's been done for a year. We've already knocked out all the kinks or the different things. We've we've taken privacy. We, Zoom has done its thing to protect everybody. Like, come on, it's been done for a year. It's been tied, trust, tested, and proven, right? Yeah. So... Charles actually makes a very key point. I think you guys are both going to find interesting and actually mm. agree. Charles H. Jeffers II says, as opposed to forcing people to come into an office, should the focus be on creating an environment where people want to come in? Wow. Mm. That's, That's a good a point. Yeah. That's a kind con- well, I think Michaela, you touched on it with some IB companies. They have like lunch and, and, even some of them have gyms like they have it they create yeah. an environment where it's like you know some of them may have daycare or daycare. Culture yeah. and so on so i i agree with that that's a good one and tamara richardson says be careful what you wish for unless your skills are unique and exceptional if you can work from home you can also uh work from an outsource location too now we talked about this mm. last year um and that's a good point so and I made this point to Bermudians last year. So thanks for that reminder, Tamara. I was saying that I think Bermudians do have to be careful because if they realize that the job can be done remotely, meaning not at the office, they're like, well, you know what? I can go to this country and get it done even cheaper and so on. So it is a, it, those are some things we must keep in mind. Yeah. 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 So I don't, I don't like that vein, to be honest, um, because it's fine to outsource things. Absolutely. Um, but at the same time, no, <laughs> like, yeah. no, working from remote, working remotely from home when I can drive, you know, however long it takes to get into the office is wildly different than outsourcing a job to somewhere in India. Mm, I'm not right. saying that's the only place that jobs are outsourced to, but you know what I mean? It's, it's a bit different. I'm not, I don't think anyone is sitting here saying I never want to go into the office again. No, yeah. but like Charles said, make it a place where people want to come, yeah. make it optional so that, you know, I'm protecting my health, my mental health, all of that. And, you know, I'm an employee who wants to show up and do the things. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm the, and I'm the outsource. What's wrong with me being the outsource? S- mm. Source it out to me, you know, and it's okay because in the event that something goes wrong, I can come into the office exactly. or can, you know, tend to a situation. Outsource it to me. I'm I'm smiling because I hear you and I agree with you, but in capitalists, <laughs> I, yeah. they they don't care about whether they can outsource. Yeah. They care about oh, Sherry and Michaela and Jamel can do the job from home, so, and I'm paying them twenty dollars an hour. Well, you know what? I wonder if I could get the same job done and such and such on five dollars an hour. And so I I I hear you, but we we've got to remember. 
conscience, good conscience and the human element is not really yeah. priority for many of these big companies. And I think right. that's part of the challenge that we face. Let's bring in Liana to the combo um, to see uh, <laughs> if she's got, uh, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot today, Lee, but this this is a, I mean, <laughs> wow, so it's a wow combo. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I As I stated, I'm a fan of giving people the option. If you trust them, if they're able to do the job, I'm, I'm a fan of people having the option. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think people should have the option. Just like Sherry said, it's been tried. It's been tested. We've worked out the kinks for over a year now. Um, if people are efficient working from home, hey, do it. <laughs> um, I do agree, yeah. however, as well with Mr. Jeffers um, on the other hand, because you know, sometimes, you know, we've been working in these offices and company morale could be very low because people are just not happy in the office. So I feel like, you know, you definitely should look at both um, both sides of the table for sure. Yeah. I, I just want to share a few more comments because I immediately thought this and, and, and Tamara wrote, I would encourage you to talk to those who once worked in many departments that have now been fully outsourced in our banks and financial firms. I'm just reminding you all that businesses have one goal. And that's what I just touched on as well. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's like in, in the society we live in, it's, it, again, it, it hurts to say this, but the reality is the human element does not come first. Um, they, they care about their bottom line. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we know what the seemingly right thing is, but the right thing and what's best for their business they don't necessarily think of one the same. So it's a it's a tough one. I, this, is, yeah. this is a conversation that we definitely have to continue um, because I'm still at the point that if you value me as an employee, and I think this is where we're all at based on what we said today, if you value me, then trust me enough to continue to do it mm-hmm. rather than anyone you can outsource to do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it, you know, I, that, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. You know what, Lee? We're gonna let you turn it down. Um, give us a news break. <laughs> Over to you, sister. Thanks, Jamal, Michaela, and Shari. TGIF to everyone that's tuned in with us this morning. I hope everyone is having a great start to the day and definitely looking forward to the upcoming weekend. I'm Leanna Lambert, and it's time for our Daily Hour News Break. Well, he said it's not over, and that's exactly what's in the pipeline. The island should prepare themselves for possible disruptions next week as members of the Bermuda Industrial Union are set to launch a work-to-rule and overtime ban in a row over decertification votes, which came into effect last week. Now, President Chris Herbert confirmed the week-long industrial action last evening in a report. The industrial action could or would be reviewed by the BIU's general counsel after the week was over. The BIU is due to hold a press conference today to discuss a work to rule where it is said that staff would stick to mandated hours only. The union has been in a prolonged standoff with the government over decertification, which would retain the right of non-unionized staff to vote on whether a group of employees should be represented by a union. The government has stated, however, that it does not support the BIU's request to amend this new legislation to remove the previously existing right for workers who are being deducted fees from their wages to participate in workplace ballots. The department, or sorry, the Bermuda Tourism Authority has taken a position to back the police investigation being launched on behalf of the Department of National Security following this week's controversy into an alleged breach of COVID-19 regulations at a wrapped up organized by upmarket U.S. online fashion retailer Revolve. Now, Chief Executive of the BTA, Charles Jeffers II, said that the large group exemption application for the event held by Revolve did not include a raft up. He said that BTA shared full support for an investigation into the possible breach of COVID protocols at the yacht event on June 8th. Now, the BTA provided support to local organizers helping to promote the island's message that it is open to visitors through the event, which included administrative filings such as group exemption applications for a series of photo shoots and on-site destination support for influencers 
social media activities. However, Mr. Jeffers made it clear that the applications did not include permission for a boot wrap up. Now, Revolve posted on its Instagram account yesterday that it had taken all necessary measures to ensure the safest trip possible, including vaccinations and coronavirus testing, and that the company had been given a thorough briefing on the island's pandemic rules. It doesn't seem as if there's much light at the end of the tunnel regarding the hefty increases in food prices. This according to Lindo's manager, Zach Monis, in a recent letter written with contribution from Wilcox of Miles Market. Uh, the letter addressed reasoning behind the, market, uh, the price markets increasing, which Mr. Monis attributed to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the change in political leadership in the U.S., and the issuing of economic policy changes, the Suez Canal blockage, the shift to remote working, and more recently, the pipeline hacking, which he said are just a few of the things impacting all of us in ways we had never imagined. Now, the ripple effect, he says, has spilled over into base materials used in manufacturing food, food packaging manufacturing, labor shortages, transportation challenges, and currency fluctuations all going on. Uh -huh. Now, since the beginning of the year, beef prices have risen by 40% and are forecast to rise another 15%. Similarly, pork prices are over 50% higher and expected to remain high, while chicken prices have doubled but will hopefully begin to decline in midsummer as the, as the supply begins to increase. Now, the latter states that although island retailers and wholesalers have no control over the increased cost, they are still looking to minimize the cost of food as much as possible. And the island's blood donation service got a boost from the Hamilton Princess and Beach Club as it gears up to celebrate World Blood Donor Day next Monday. The hotel donated raffle prizes of a weekend stay for the most active donors and a champagne brunch for newer ones to encourage more people to come forward. Tim Morrison, the general manager at the Hamilton Princess, said that no one knew when they might need a life-saving blood donation. While the Bermuda Hospitals Boards and the Bermuda Blood Donor Center thank the hotel for its help. Now, new donors who gave blood in the past year will be eligible for the raffle for the Champagne Brunch. The winners will be announced on June 18th. Taking a look at today's weather, it is a high near 82 and a low near 75 degrees. We'll see cloudy spells at times with a few showers as the low develops and deepens along the frontal boundary to our west. Local southwest winds will strengthen while feeding moisture into the area this weekend, which will create bands of showers along with possible rumbles of thunder at times, more so during Sunday. That's all for our daily hour news break. Let's head back over to Jamal, Michaela, and Sherry in the studio for today's Daily Focus. So I don't, what is a work to rule? Anybody know? Let me, Michaela's on. You're on mute, Kels. Oh, sorry. We should have, we should have had Linda come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have to find out what a work to rule is because I'm listening to your story about the union and I'm like, this seems like it's leading towards something else. So this is mm -hmm. something to watch. Um, that's, that's what you got out of the news. Sure. I, oh, I got a lot. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think Jamal I, was going to go on that. I actually thought that Mal was actually going to gear more towards um, the prices of meat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to say, it's time to become a vegetarian, obviously, because. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, if the union do their work, you ain't got to worry about the price of meat because it ain't going to be no meat coming into the country if the duck shut down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yo, I, did, I just wonder. Fair point. Uh, I honestly do wonder, and, and folks, keep your eyes on that, what the end goal and the result is going to be of this work to rule. Is it a lead to a strike? Is it going to, like, because mm -hmm. both parties don't seem like they're going to move. So I, I'm interested to see what it's about, how it works out, because I think... Minister Jason Hayward already said that the government's not backing down from the, the certification. So Bermuda, pay attention, see how this turns out. Um, 
Mr. Ferbert's known for standing his ground. So we will we'll check that out. Lee, thank you so much and have a great weekend. You guys as well. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. You probably could have used Lee's help with Family Feud today, but you guys, I mean, <laughs> I just, oh, he thinks I we need help. The what? shade is real. Yeah, we don't yeah. need help. We're good yeah. together. Yeah. We're good together. Yeah. We may be separate on either ends yeah. of the island, but when it comes to this, we know how to put that aside for Hello. a moment and, and come together. Check us in 25 minutes, folks. We'll be right back with you <laughs> now. Hi, I'm Karen, a nurse at the old folks' home. <sighs> These long hours used to kill my feet until my hairdresser told me about a great place to buy a pair of clogs medical house <sighs> finally relief they also carry uniforms in bright bold colors and not to mention the support stocking karen miss soldiers read her bed again oh gosh these days i need all the support i can get medical house has relocated next to the dandy town field number six bakery lane pembroke we're spotlighting our old friends woodstock farms who started up 50 years ago in the belief that we need more trustworthy natural food sources Starting with one product, their line, mostly certified organic, is now more than 250 strong in 10 categories. This month we're featuring accoutrements of the barbecue, for us the pinnacle of home cuisine and one of the few forms of restorative recreation now within our reach. Try Woodstock Organic Sweet Relish, Tomato Ketchup, Baby Kosher Dill Pickles, Sauerkraut and Hickory and Original Barbecue Sauce. Lindo's, why go anyplace else? All right, welcome back to The Big Show, Michaela and Sherry Vanderpool, myself, Jamal Hartman. It's The Daily Hour brought to you by Medical House One Communications, Lindos, and our friends over at Channel 82, where you can stream this and many other locally produced shows. Um, without further ado, let's bring our guest for the day. She's an author, Joan K. Espinel. Got some good books under her belt. Um, welcome to the show, madam. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Well, I must good morning. make a comment that I am wearing red. If you see, yes. <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> yes, I'm on the on the east end of the island. You see, so um, I've got at least I've got the blue behind me, right? There you, you can see that. Right? Well, Thank it's you. a red and blue combination that you got going no, no, no. on, Miss no, no. June. It's a red and blue combination. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I'm, so I'm right in the middle, right? I can carry either flag. No, 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 you gotta make a choice. <laughs> Pick a side. It is the, it is the blue. Okay, right? okay, yeah. she's some good. I, I do see two two different shades of blue back there, so you are forgiven. You are forgiven. So, look, yeah. um, welcome to the show. Um, before we get into the conversation, just get, tell us a bit about your background. Uh, okay, I have such an unusual background, I would say more so than most Bermudians, because I have done so many things. And um, I was brought up like at, at John Smith's Bay. My parents ran a beach club there. So I literally became like a water baby. I spent most of my time in the water. And uh, when I, in my 20s, I was part of an old girl crew that went across the Atlantic. So we made, you know, quite history sort of in Europe and England at that time. And uh, then I went on from there, uh, my professional life uh, was I was a public relations director for Castle Harbor Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, also went up to New York, worked for Robert Reed Associates, handling public relations for their hotels in Bermuda, which was the uh, Belmont Harmony Hall and Bermudiana at that time. Uh, then I spun off on my own and actually <clears throat> came back to Bermuda from New York and opened up a boutique called Saka Tomb, which many, many people from that era still remember. Mm -hmm. and um, opened the Bermuda Swim School, where we had a, a huge, huge, uh, uh, I would say, attendance every summer, you know, with children. And uh, then that spun off into um, oh, doing designing of parios in the Caribbean. I went down on a yacht, ended up in Antigua, mm -hmm. and that led to the opening of Pinot Bermuda, and that was like 40 years ago. So we set up like the, a textile printing plant in Bermuda, Mm -hmm. all stemming from, you know, hand painting parios in Antigua. And uh, so here we are today because our whole business uh, last year was destroyed by Hurricane, or 2019, uh, we were destroyed by Hurricane Humberto, you know, when it struck um, St. George's area. Yeah. So, uh, and, but when you talk about working from home, when the uh, COVID started and uh, the, I, I was thinking that, you know, if you're in the creative field of, of doing anything, you always work from home, you know, so it meant 
no changes for my lifestyle, and I just continued working like as, as I always have done, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that is where the um, uh, the new book, uh, Dear God, you know, Save the Children, came from. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll, we'll definitely get to yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Well, Miss well, Jones, tell us how. Today. <laughs> How did you get into writing and in particularly stories surrounding Bermuda? Yeah. Okay. Um, this dates back. I mean, to, to like the number one thing that I told you is, is going over across the Atlantic on, you know, this, it was a very small boat, 32 foot Norwegian uh, schooner. And uh, we were, it was so unique for us to do it because there were three girls and we had like, you know, a skipper and a mate. But the, um, you know, like when we hit England, you know, I've got a lot of publicity. And also, my log, parts of my log were actually printed, right? This opened the door for me to go into writing, but I never did it from the creative end of it. And uh, But it enabled me to get the job at Castle Harbor doing public relations for them. And I would do all the press releases, all the interviews. And uh, But writing creatively was always sort of in the back of my mind. And I did start a book, uh, it's called The Ant and the Golden Cross. And uh, this was years ago before ants even became popular, you know, <laughs> right? And, uh, and and that is still in the in the background uh, for me to publish one day because I did, as an artist, I'm able to uh, coordinate my words, you see, with art, art and illustrations. And I wanted to beat what um, oh, Alice in Wonderland had produced, so John Tenniel, you know, and he produced like 97 of pen and ink illustrations for Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And I reached that limit. So I do have all these illustrations, you know, that can go into this public publication if mm -hmm. I get around to doing it, you know. But so that was it. The, my career was launched by through sailing, really. I can by sailing, by writing, by having, uh, you know, this log published. And, um, and that put me into this direction. But my, uh, I would say my experiences in life you know are so amazing are, are so varied and uh even when we went across the atlantic we were hit by a force eight we lost our our uh, our main sail you know so they and a horrendous escapes of you know I, we were, we we're lucky that we even made it you know so everything that i have done in life you know i have used to put into my writing and uh, i say that um i met a an author at the uh of book america one time and he gave a speech and he said that he carries around a sack of diamonds with him and all of his diamonds, each diamonds represent something that he had experienced in life and he uses it and incorporates it. So that is the best. Nice. Well, isn't he lucky? <laughs> but tell us about what is your favorite book that you have written to date? What What do you think is your favorite? Oh, wow. Um, okay, I'll tell you, uh, in 1975, and this was when I did some creative writing, I wrote a book called the tree frog and the poinsettia, mm -hmm. poinsettia right? And uh, I was just, you know, really young um, and at that time. And anyway, submitted it to the Royal Gazette and I, I did win first prize for that particular story. And I went ahead and I illustrated it in pen and ink and I just knew that it was such a vibrant story that it needed color. And fortunately, uh, you know, when the whole revolution came with the computers and with Adobe Design and, you know, where you can formulate your own books, I took all my colored image, all my black and white images, and I transformed, you know, transposed them to color. And it's a hardback, uh, and it did, it was recognized by Writer's Digest when I submitted it to one of their competitions as outstanding in color and storyline and, you know, uh, illustrations for, you know, the art. So that has that achieved a, a really good recognition. I would say that is one of my favorites because it is a full description. It, it brings in so many elements of Bermuda in it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So whatever I have written, really is. I've only written one book that is not uh, about Bermuda, and it's called A Boy Without a Foot. And all my illustrations are based in France. You know. Okay. I try to make them as magical as possible for children. You know, so that they'll get very involved and absorbed into writing. Mm -hmm. Well, and speaking about children, how important was it for you to write as you talked about Dear God Save the Children, We Are the Future, talking about COVID and so forth? How important was that? Very, very important. Uh, I, okay, I, I followed a request done by the um, Bermuda National Museum and Dockyard. 
and they uh, were asking anybody in the creative field, whether it's writing or art, uh, to write something or show something that they have done over COVID, right? And I composed, uh, okay, three articles at that time. Now, this is dating back to like last, um, you know, a year ago, April, March. I mean, really early, you know? And one of the things that had uh, struck me was the United States was now sort of in a panic mode. Uh, they had 50,000 deaths, right? And to everybody listening to that for the first time, that was astronomical. And I composed a, um, an article relating their deaths to like flowers and, and everything that we see in Bermuda. And if we took that 50,000 and if we attribute it to, long, you know, 50,000 long tails dead at horseshoe beach, 50,000 parrotfish, you know, we would be horrified. But because it's people and it's numbers, we really cannot envision that many people of that quantity. And so this was one of the first articles. And when I finished it, uh, I was thinking that, no, this mean needs more civility. This does not need to just be one article that's going to be put in somebody's archives and never read. So uh, that's when I conceived of the idea of writing a book that could go out and which would appeal, you know, to the local market. But it really hits the essence of, of children, you know, what children are thinking at that time. There were no um, records of deaths of children at that you know, particular moment. But in the meantime, yes, there are there have been many, many deaths and there are, are deaths are even increasing in South America now of children. And so I think, you know, what I did was very important. And uh, so I was able, I was very lucky because I was able to use um, a lot of the artwork that I had done of children in my other publications. And I pulled those out. And so these are the children in Good Night, uh, not Good Night, but in the, um, you know, Dear God book, you know. And uh, so, so that was the that was the whole start of it. And I put it out to some of the charities, and the only one that really uh, worked with it was the um, oh St. Vincent's de Paul Society, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know the Catholic mm -hmm. churches, and none of the others uh, you know responded. So, but I, at least they did make some funds on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. It, yeah. So we're just getting it launched now because it really is nowhere, you know. A, okay. As far as a book, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. So can you tell me what your goal is for the work that you do? The goal? Mm -hmm. What's oh, your goal? Okay, at my age, um, it's, it's really <laughs> just one day at a time. <laughs> you know, yeah, the goal is, okay, um, it is to leave Bermuda a, a good record of, of what my life has been in Bermuda and which I have done. I think, and uh, I have another, it's a YA novel called The Drummer Boy of Castle Island. And I was lucky enough that as a, you know, a kid of like 10, 12, 11 years of age and right into my teens, I was fishing with a, one of the old fishermen from Tuckerstown, Christy Smith, you know, and so my background on the ocean with him was is incorporated in everything and what I know of the forts out there. So I think I've captured Bermuda in many ways. I've captured her magic and I've, uh, I recorded a lot of the magic that is long gone. I mean, we have we no longer have it, you know. And uh, so I, I just hope that I, you know my legacy will be, you know, something that does contribute to Bermuda. I love how you say how you know you hope that you captured her magic. So, what advice would you give to other young authors looking to publish or write a book? Yeah. How can they capture that same magic? Well, okay, um, you know, I'm working with. Kathy Bassett's, you know, the children's group, and um, they, I'm, you know, they're very, very young, but uh, they have aspirations of writing something over the summer, and what, to capture a magic, you just have to, you know, use all of your senses, and a lot of authors do not do this, and I think that if uh, they learn these, the ABCs of, of writing when they're really small, you know, it will carry them through life. And we're working on such a thing as like census, you know, if they establish a character, they have to act, put all the things that they feel into their character. In other words, they are the eyes of their character. So they have to see, they have to relate what he sees. They have to relate what he hears, what he tastes, what he smells. And the same way with emotions, they have to, you know, bond in totally with emotions, you know, how they feel when they're happy, how they feel when they're sad or scared, you know, and, uh, so I think this applies to anybody writing. Now, writing has become a lot easier for all authors. Now, the reason why I never pursued um, oh, going big with it, because well, I'm writing to a limited, uh, I would say, um, uh, audience, you know, an audience that's in Bermuda or tourists who come in. And it is so Bermudian. 
And I didn't know, you know, like what the scope would be for international publishers taking it on. And you really have to know your ABC. So any beginning writer should take some courses, you know, really of what is the requirements of fiction writing. You know, <coughs> excuse me. What do you need? Well, you need a, a pretty good imagination. You need a good character. And uh, but also you need the steps. And I would say that writing is like driving a car or learning how to drive a car. You learn the steps, how to use the gears, how to drive, and you could drive in the same way with art. If you learn shapes and you know, and you practice, anybody can do art, which people don't realize. And uh, so it, it, they, they have uh, so many outlets now that if they go on the web, they will find people that will help them. If they take a subscription to Writer's Digest, they will get plenty of, of ideas and uh, articles, uh, you know, uh, directing of, of how they handle their topics, uh, what is the best method of expression, who they approach, if they want to do the one-off uh, printing, and this is going to presses who will, will print a book, a book on demand, that's it, what it's called, mm. right? And that is wide open, you see. So the opportunity of getting published, you don't have to be published by a major house. You really don't, not if you want to put your books out in Bermuda. And oh, by the way, I use, what has changed my whole um, uh, portfolio is I've always brought in, uh, the first books were actually printed abroad, right? Mm-hmm. At a tremendous expense with importing and everything. They were coming from Singapore and huge quantities. And now I, um, just as of a couple of years ago, I've been using ProServe in Bermuda and uh, they are doing wonderful work for me and I can get very, um, oh, small runs made. I can get, I can have a book published, you know, a hundred copies if I want, you know. So this has energized me again because Gombe Baby, Goodnight Bermuda, a lot of my books, most of my books are out of print. And by using ProServe, I'm able to put these back on the market. You know? awesome. so, so it's ProServe and they are under the Rosebank Theater. Fantastic. And it's Mr. Awesome. Uh, you know, Glenn Phillips who's in charge. You know, so if anybody has any projects, I would recommend them. Beautiful yeah. color work. Real quickly, how can people, um, you know, I saw someone just type um, on the, in the comments about um, their daughter does the reading program with um, Miss Kathy Bassett. How can someone who, uh, basically we know Bermuda has a literacy issue and problem, how can people get in touch with yourself and Miss Bassett to try to get um, involved in that? Okay, all right, right now, um, you know, her focus is with children and uh, the, the whole concept was started well, during the pandemic, uh, when children you know had to be homebound, mm-hmm. and uh, they um, uh, they conceived the idea. It was she was working with the the Rotary, right? And so this is the, uh, the youth group who actually thought of this idea, you know, of let's try to help children with um, reading difficulties, reading challenges, and uh, so this is where Kathy came into it. I've only been working with her you know, since the beginning of May, because she phoned me one day, I knew her when she was teaching at uh, one of the schools. And she said, Oh, would you, we've elected you as our author, you know, author illustrator. And would you like to come on board, which I have, you know, and, uh, but she has devoted her total time to this. And she is a, if I may say to her um, about her, I mean, she is a whirlwind. I mean, she is an absolute whirlwind. She involved in so much. And uh, it's just, um, you know, she does so much good for people mm-hmm. and she has donated her time. I am donating my time, but right now we are just working like with the children, you know, the young children. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, they can contact um, Kathy or myself. I mean, uh, you know, via email, they can look up or, or Facebook. They can go on my Facebook page mm-hmm. and just send me a message, you know, yeah. and, uh, but I know that, you know, what I'm preparing now for the children are mm-hmm. some actual, programs for them to follow, you know, like okay. I said, census emotion and whatnot. But this is applicable to everybody. It applies okay. to everybody who wants to write, you know? Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, awesome conversation. And hopefully some people will be getting in touch to see how they can get involved in the program. And obviously you have quite a few books mentioning Gumbay Baby is the one I remember from years ago. Um, that young man who I know what the book was focused on is now yeah. a young boy. Um, yeah. um, probably a teenager now, right? But um, yeah, right. Uh, Ms. Aspinall, thank you so much for joining us today yeah. and um, appreciate it. And hopefully you have a great day. Yeah, it, it was actually wonderful. I really enjoyed all your discussions, you know, because you hit <laughs> all, 
you're home, home with the red, you're home, <laughs> you know, working at home, which I agree with perfectly. I really do, you know. But you have a great show, and I'm Thank I'm you. honored actually that you put me on. I really am. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thanks for our platform. <laughs> have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. All right. So thanks again to Joan K. Aspinall. Um, good reading program for people who, um, as, as, as you know, we've had Dr. Pyramid on, we've had Dr. Curtis Tweed, and they've spoken about literacy in Bermuda. So it's very important. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the feud. We have the giveaway. You already know what the hashtag's going to be. Not Heineken Zero today, folks. Not Heineken Zero. Because it was Tune in to the Full 100 Radio every Tuesday through Sunday at 7 p.m. Bermuda time as we bring you the love, romance, sexiness with nighttime jams only on your station for conversations and entertainment. The Full 100 Radio. Download the app available for Android and Apple devices. All right. Welcome back to the big show. Michaela, Sherry, myself, Jamel. Thanks again to Ms. Joan K. Espinel for coming on and having a discussion. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that conversation, don't forget to show us some love, like, love. Um, if you found something funny, you can do that as well. If something <laughs> you feelings, feel free to cry. Let us know how you felt. Um, definitely um, interesting conversation throughout straight from work from home. I got some people texting me about the union thing, um, which is interesting. That's a conversation in itself. But uh, we now have the day play brought to you by our friends at Heineken Zero. Um, and I, I I don't know if I took too much pride, Sherry, in finally stumping Michaela. It's not that <laughs> I think you did. It. I, I, I not did. That you did it, right? It's not that. It's that I thought that. I'm like, she's a coffee girl. Like, she's going to get this, right? You see how it's just shaming me, right? You he see, is. You said you love coffee, but you didn't know they came from Ethiopia. You hear it, right? <laughs> but, I hear it. And then I saw it on social media. Oh. Let's let, let's just put that out there. Oh, see. Right in the stories, and I was like, "Oh, we're we're further shaming me." Okay, all right. I'm I see that having, that's having a Heineken Zero while you tell me about. Oh yeah, gosh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, thanks again to Heineken Zero. Appreciate you guys um, over there for looking after. So, you guys ready for the feud? Yes, ready. Help them out, folks. You, you, look, got your hand on your bus already. <laughs> I think this is going to be too easy for you. Okay, here's the first question. All right. This is too easy. Okay, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Besides Thanksgiving, name a holiday when people eat too much. Christmas. Christmas. I mean. <laughs> Give me some bowels, whistles, I'll something. Drop a, I'll drop a bomb. But let hey, me hey. Yeah. I just, that's the easy, like what, they already gave you what the answer was once they eliminated Thanksgiving. But anyway. Yeah. Um, all right. Second question. Here you go, folks. Name something to which people love to give away the ending. Movies. Movies. Uh, well, I'll share what else was on there. Number one was movies. Number two was a book. Yeah, and I was going to say or a book. Number three, a joke. All right, here's the final one. Um, the, you, you all are so, this is so easy. The, the, got audience, three? the audience doesn't even have a chance to, like someone said Christmas when we won the second question. I mean, it's too easy. Here's, here's, here we go. Name something that one of the five little piggies did. Went to the market. No, we're having a bonus. Uh, we're having a bonus. We're having a, we're having a bonus. Uh, it's too easy. It's too easy. Here we go. Told you we weren't going to stump you. I mean, you That's, weren't going to stump us. That's right. something one family member might steal from another. Money. Money. Easy. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Coins. Just one more. Just one more. One more. One more. Just one more. One more. One more. I, I can't believe it. Let's Here's go. the last one for the day, folks. Last one for the day. Okay. Name something in your house with four legs. Couch. My dog. One at a time. What'd you say, Sherry? Couch. I said dog. Pet would be number two. Couch would be last okay. and six. Oh. So that's not the number one answer. Something with four legs. A table. Table. 
<laughs> Boom, they got it. All right. So I did stump them, folks. I did get them. They, they had- They did it? <laughs> you don't think that is one like me. Not three strikes? Question. Is it three strikes? Yeah. So you got two strikes just now. One, two. And then I said table. Okay, okay, okay. You won. Okay, cool, cool. I thought I got the three strikes, but I thought I got them. I thought, I... all right. Congratulations to you both. You got it. <laughs> Thank um, you. Damn. I almost have to. <laughs> oh, you, you you getting it? You getting it? Um, we gotta give we gotta give, give away something today. Okay. Oh, awesome. Give us, so hashtag the daily hour, folks. You know what it's gonna be. Hashtag the daily hour. Um, with that said, um, work from home. Let's just go revisit that part of the conversation be- while everyone puts their hashtag in. Um, do you see Bermudian companies adopting this, or no. culturally you just don't think Bermudian companies are there? No. Bermudian based companies, like, or do Bermudian you mean based. companies that are here in Bermuda? Bermudian based company, Bermudian companies, like that are located in Bermuda. I say no, and I say no for the very reason that Sherry brought up. Mm-hmm. Leases are expensive. Most companies are in town, um, and yeah, I I don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, here's the thing. Um, we, we have seen so many people working from home. Um, one of the things that I've noticed people have shared over the last year is them picking up their children or almost more time with their children and family, yeah. um, you know, mm-hmm. loved ones, um, parent, like I see a lot of people posting pictures with the parents, being able to spend more time with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely, um, a different time, but we also yeah. must, must just remember that most companies, while the human element matters, it's not always front of mind. Front of mind is right. how can they make the most money? And if yeah. I, I said this last year, no lie, when we first spoke about this, I said it last year. I said, we have to be careful as Bermudians because we have seen jobs relocated to other spaces. So mm-hmm. there has to be a balance. Um, my hope is that a b- balance can be struck. I think the hybrid model that I think some of these companies like Facebook are using two or three times a week is probably one of the... It's the common ground, I guess, right? It's yeah. Um, but I, I think I think it goes back to, like you said, it's it's money because when the majority of people are working from home, you don't need to go to Gibbons Company or whatever to buy work clothes. Uh-huh. You don't need True. to go to Hickory Stick to get a sandwich or whatever. You don't need to go to Nona's to the salad bar if you're working from home. Um, so I think all of that has to be taken into consideration as well, even though I am in favor of work from home or work remotely indefinitely. Indeed. But it's also on the flip side, looking at a nice treat to go into town and say, mm-hmm. okay, I've worked from home. Let me go in and buy my lunch, you know, here and yeah. there. I'm sure, I'm sure it's of course not the same as everybody working upstairs of Hickory Stick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course the street and all those kind of things, but it can be a balance. And if you look at the mental health of everybody, you know, and, and how it is in regards to just being at home and being able to be there for your family and others. Yeah. Like to me, that's more, that's priceless. Yeah, Indeed. no, I agree with you. And then for instance, like if I go into town on a Friday, I'm going to splurge a little bit more on my lunch mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of getting like a takeout salad. I'm probably going to sit down somewhere with a nice view and have a beautiful lunch. I'm probably going to spend more money than I would if I just, you know, unless, unless you're addicted to hook, right? Um, well, you there, any, that too. feel good for us. I'm sure. <laughs> Say that again. I'm sorry. Got any feel goods for us? Just feel good on a Friday. All right. So let's ha- have you all put in your hashtag, the daily hour. Let's see what we're up to. Let's see what we're up to. Looks like um, we only have 21. Um, let's see. Uh, let's let's get the draw going. Nobody so, wants a wants a prize. Uh, that's Did fun. you even say what the prize was? It's the same every Friday. It's a mug. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. We have some good weekend trivia. I think Michaela and Sherry and Leanna and Larry are probably going to throw fruit at me when they see me. So um, you don't want to miss this weekend's trivia. To oh, so give away a mug and a vulture to someplace. Um, one of our sponsors. So here's the draw today, folks. We're, let, let's see who's winning today's mug. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I see all of you, but this is what it is. Come on, big money, big money. No whammies. <laughs> no whammies, right? No whammies, no whammies. What we got, what we got, what we got. Who is it? Janine. Ah, Janine. 
Yay! All right, yes, Janae. Janae. <laughs> you got yourself a daily hour mug, so you are an official member of an exclusive club. We will definitely um, cheers, get in touch. Janae. Don't forget, Janae, send an email to engage at the daily hour.com and you can be sipping a Heineken Zero out of yours like me or coffee out of um, <laughs> the, the others like, like the ladies and tea. So, um, <laughs> any final thoughts before we head out, Sherry? No, um, like I said, have a, a great Friday. Get, you know, you're, I'm back in Bermuda. So, you know, I should be just seeing you all on a good happy hour, on a good Friday, and um, drinking Heineken Zero with a touch of rose. <laughs> <laughs> what a mix. What a mix. What you got for us, <laughs> Tomorrow is rose day. So, get you a nice bottle, enjoy it, have a good time. And let me share the daily inspiration real quick before we head yes, out. Please do. All right. People who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Steve Jobs, right? No, oh. Rob Siltonen. Oh, I did. Yeah, maybe Steve Jobs popularized it. Yeah. Okay. So I got. I, yeah, yeah. I, I think I see it, but um, yeah. that he is. He popularized it. He didn't give us nothing in in the um family. Like, why are you giving it to him? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's what I should do. I should make him guess my quotes. Boom. Next week. Yes. That that, that would be a yeah. <laughs> Neil, um, thanks again to our partners, Medical House One Communications and Lindis for ensuring that we were to do this with you on a daily basis. If you haven't already, just make sure you go follow us on Instagram and Twitter. You don't want to miss the gaffes that go on there. Um, don't forget to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, we appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for making us part of your daily routine. Sherry, Michaela, myself. Folks, make it a great weekend. Cheers. Bye. Rosé, coffee, and Heineken Zero. Trust me. This is. Peace out. <laughs>